and today we're taking a trip to the sawmill. This is Albert, the sawmill man in front of me driving that truck. And this is his little setup here, some pine logs he's got here for cutting. Sorry about the jarredness. <laughs> and we're driving around to the back. And I get a lot of lumber from this gentleman here. His prices are real reasonable. And I typically buy the older stuff that has been sitting around for a couple years. And uh, I don't buy the new sawmill stuff, stuff that I can dry shortly. A stack of pine right there. So you got some older stuff in here. A lot of times if you drive around, you know, ask around at the local saw or at the local lumber yard, somebody knows someone who's got a sawmill. And this gentleman here is real good on prices and real fair and he comes up with some pretty interesting stuff from time to time. Anyway, I'm gonna hop out here and see if I can't find some walnut. Albert says this is an oak. We're not quite sure exactly what species it is, but it sure is pretty. It's dead, the outside rotten, it's been down a while. Albert, how do we do uh, species identification? What's the best way? Experience? Experience. Yeah? There are books. I have one. It's the Bible of some kind of something, southeastern or something. Trees. I have a copy. It's like $30. Is it? You know, a little paperback deal. Uh-huh. But it doesn't list all of our trees. It sure is pretty though. I get a lot of people asking me questions about identification. How do I identify species? Yeah, and I, books to... You know, and I tell them that one, the one book um, I remember was, uh, it, they call it the Woodworker's Bible. You that know, might it, be the one. It's, 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 it's about that thick. Yeah. It's just a little thing, but it shows the leaf and the wood and the wood wet, I think. Yeah. It's, it's a different color if it's wet. Right. Right, it'll blonde. This will blonde out a little bit when it dries out. See, that would be good for something. You See, this will be. Maybe. This over here is what it looks like after it starts to dry out. Some. It almost looks like a walnut. Yeah. All right. Well, the trip to the uh, sawmill was fruitful. Uh, no walnut though. I did get some cypress. This is uh, four by. Oh, what is that? Four by twelve. Chunk of cypress. I got some two by twelve. It's a little over twelve inches, and another one underneath there. This one is again it's two by twelve or a little more, and up in here, I got a couple pieces of this. This is cherry. There's another piece underneath here somewhere. So, uh, whenever you're getting wood from the sawmill like that, I always try to get stuff that's been cut at least a couple years and been stacked underneath other wood. That way, a lot of the moisture hasn't gotten to it. And um, I this was a good find for me because I'm going to use this to help. Um, with my shop, remodeling the shop, and that cherry I have a project for. So identifying wood species can be kind of tricky, and there are a lot of them out there. I've been doing this for 30 years, and I might be able to identify 40, you know, different wood species. Albert's been doing this for 50 years, and he still occasionally has to reference his book to find out what he's dealing with. You know, there's a lot of woodworkers out there um, who talk about all kinds of different species of wood, but in reality, most of us don't know much more than 30 or 40 species of wood, and most of us don't use more than 30 or 40 species of different types of wood. So if you want to learn about wood species, you're going to have to buy the book, get online, look around, you know, and spend a little energy learning the different types of species, what they look like with their leaves, their bark, their, the insides of them, if you want to go out in the woods and identify them. Um, 
<laughs> no easy answer there. But, you know, I, I like using guys like Albert because everything that he has is select cut. He's been doing this a very long time and spent a lot of time networking with uh, guys who do tr uh, tree trimming services, who remove trees from people's properties, and, you know, integrating himself in the area. So if someone's going to cut a tree down and they want to save the wood, most people give him Albert's number because he spent so many years out there. So it's all select cut. It's not, you know, a bunch of lawyers going in and ripping stuff out and bringing them to him. And he's small and keeps the money local. And that's really what I enjoy about Albert. Albert is one of those guys that you just don't find anymore. I could spend hours over there talking to him. He really has so much information. And if you can find somebody like that in your area, definitely use them. Definitely spend some time getting to know them and listen to what they have to say. You'll probably learn something. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you like this video, and we will be talking to you all real soon.